The antique ivory laws in the United Kingdom in 2022 have just changed. So if you own any antique ivory, no matter how small, you really need to watch this video unless you fancy going to jail. And the new ivory laws apply to some quite surprising things. Musical instruments. It gets worse. Pieces of furniture. Do let me know, actually, what you think about these new ivory laws. Are they going to work? Are they fair? Are they a good idea? And are they going to help elephants and people alive in Africa today? I really want to hear your thoughts. But the question is, can you sell antique ivory today in 2022? Well, the simple answer to that question is, yes, you can certain pieces of ivory and I'm going to show you what you can sell and what you can't sell. At the beginning of 2022, the ivory laws stated that you could legally sell any piece of antique ivory on the condition that it was fully carved, worked and dated to pre-1947. Well, now you have to forget that completely it's all changed. The old laws have been blown out of the water. Let me show you what you can and can't sell. So let's start then with the antique ivory pieces you can sell today. And I'll show you some examples as we go through just so it makes perfect sense because I don't want you making a mistake. If you do, when it comes to buying or selling ivory now, you could very well be prosecuted. So keep watching, please. I'm going to get on to the obvious kind of carvings like this in a moment. But first of all, I'm going to show you just a few things that will quite possibly surprise you. Chests of drawers. Yes, chests of drawers. This is a 200-year-old Georgian mahogany chest of drawers, but it contains ivory. The escutcheons here, you know, the, the little decorations around the lock plates, they are made from ivory. So this chest of drawers falls under the new ivory laws, which are you can buy or sell any antique item made before 1947 from the tiniest of boxes to the largest piece of furniture containing ivory to a maximum of 10% of the item's volume. So take my chest of drawers here in my kitchen. It's mahogany, 200 years old, and it's got a little bit of ivory in it around the lock plates there. Well, it makes up quite obviously less than 10% of the whole volume of the piece. So I am legally allowed to sell this object. However, before I do sell it, I have to have a certificate issued proving that this piece that contains ivory is indeed genuine and legal to sell. You can do this online. But, of course, there's a charge involved. Each certificate will cost £20. Thank you very much. Now, you've got to ask yourself this question. Where are all these £20 going to? Are they going to Africa to help elephant sanctuaries on the ground? I don't think so. Well, that's chest of drawers sorted out then, isn't it? What about silver teapots, I hear you scream. Yes, silver teapots or silver tea sets. You know these things, antique ones pre-1947, solid silver, but with occasionally little elements of ivory around the handles. These are heat insulators, so one could hold a solid silver teapot containing boiling tea and the heat wouldn't transfer to the handle because the little slithers of ivory acted as heat insulators. The ivory laws apply now to things like that. So again, that has to be made pre-1947. And don't forget there's a charge. Oh yes, the £20 charge applies to each and every silver object containing a little sliver of ivory. So there's going to be some big problems here, let me tell you. So 
Consider a big silver tea set of ordinary quality pre-47 with some ivory in it. Somebody is going to make the calculation, they're going to weigh up. Is it worth paying several times £20 notes for a certificate applying to each and every individual bit of silver with a little tiny sliver of ivory in it? Or do you just bung the whole thing in a melting pot, scrap it, and sell it for its material value in silver. Well, let me tell you, I promise you, that is going to happen. Because of these ivory laws, we're going to lose literally tons of antique silver. Musical instruments. That really wasn't meant to happen. Right, I'm gonna use, this is my um, father-in-law's old, double bass here. It doesn't have any ivory in it, but I'll give you an idea. You know, some musical instruments contain elements of ivory. You'll understand the kind of thing, little twizzly, nozzly bits, decorations, keys, that kind of thing. Well, the ivory laws apply. So this is how it stands. You can sell musical instruments that contain elements of ivory as long as the ivory doesn't make up any more than 20% of the total volume and you can prove that the instrument was made pre-1975 and don't forget the £20 ivory charge applies. Right, let's get on to this kind of thing, sort of uh, sculptures, ornaments, that kind of thing. Ah, actually before though, let me tell you about miniatures. Miniature paintings, you know the kind of thing, little tiny miniatures like that? Well, they were often painted on ivory, little slithers, veneers of ivory. So the laws apply to these as well, and this is how it stands. So you could buy and sell an ivory miniature on the condition that it was painted before 1918 and that the whole volume of the thing is less than 320 square centimetres. I don't even know what that is, probably that big, something like that. So as long as it's made before 1918, you can sell it. Don't forget the 20 pound charge. Right, let's move on to the kind of things that most people, if you own ivory, you'll have something that looks like this. There is good and bad news here. You knew this was coming, didn't you? So the law now states, that you can sell an antique ivory item as long as it's fully carved like this and it was made, created before 1918. This was made in China in circa 1880. Sounds okay so far, but here comes the bad news. The antique ivory we're talking about though, you know, the bits that you can sell, must be of the highest artistic cultural and historic importance. Yes, serious museum quality pieces. And you or I can't just say, well, it's a really good thing, it's museum quality so I can sell it. Not at all. This is where it gets really, really nasty. So if you think you've got something of that highest level standard, then the object needs to be inspected by a, an organisation, an institution, a museum, an expert in their field, and only, I don't know, a dozen or so around the world will be allocated the job to do it. They will inspect the item, no doubt for a very large fee, thank you very much, and if they deem the ivory piece is indeed of the highest artistic merit on the planet, then they'll issue a certificate to say that you are legally allowed to sell your piece of ivory. And if you have a piece of ivory that passes this examination, inspection, then no doubt it will be worth an absolute fortune because remember, it will be absolutely the top end of the market. However, here comes the double problem. I estimate that a fraction of 1% of the ivory carvings around the world will indeed be of the highest artistic, cultural and historic importance. So I reckon you've got more chance playing and winning the lottery than you have having a piece of ivory carving at home that you will legally be able to sell. 
So what about this little collection here? I hear you wonder. Well, I can tell you that absolutely none of these pieces, all of which were legal to sell at the beginning of 2022, are legal to sell now. This you're looking at is a collection of go immediately to prison illegal ivory. YouTube think you might like this next video, so please give it a go and let me know. Oh, that was hard work.